God to pray for another blessed day. I you know they can make it out.
my God and on each one by name. And we can talk great if our God we can give him praise and give him thanks because he is great. Yes, Lord. In radio land, we are located at Ferry Island East 73rd. Like to come by and worship with us. Yeah. You can. We're glad to have you. Our pastor has another engagement today. So I'm standing in the gap. Okay. For those in radio land, the broken of our grove. For those that may not know you, I'll be bringing the message today. Our part with God's will. Amen. Amen. And I just want to say, we know we in the air conditioned weather now. Yeah. Not just a couple of weeks ago, we were saying, well, it's still cool outside. Yeah. Yeah. Now we said, <laughs> it's hot outside. But we had to take our car in for a I can get this to serve because it's not blowing like it's supposed to. Yes, it's cool there. And they said, well, we need to keep it over a week. <laughs> this part went out. Yeah. And we're going to have to try to tear down the motor to get to it and put it back together. Mm. I want to complain. <laughs> But I say, thank God, we still have a warrant. Yes. And the scripture says, in all things give thanks, not for, but in all things give thanks. And I said, thank you, Lord. Amen. Don't let me complain. <laughs> we still have a second to hear what we can do. So I just thank God for all the blessings. Our response to read this morning, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Our vision motto, on all of the lamps of the end, the light is where. Amen. Before I, I go any further, I just want to give out our props. We have a rising star in the city. All right. His name is Corey Yeti. Last Tuesday, they put on a concert at Port Hill High School. Was a blessing. That young man played the drum. He played the bongo. He sing. And he also did a little rapping. I said, "Wow, he's not so shy at all." So I'm quite sure the parents are very proud of him. Amen. Amen. We just thank God we made you go out and support. Our young people that are doing so good because we hear so much negative yeah, right. about our young people. But mm -hmm. there's so many that are doing excellent things, making yeah. an excellent job. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to keep up the good work. Yeah. 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 Graduation is on Monday. Graduating Monday. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And after that, we just have a few words from the Lord and we go home. Amen. Amen. And let's see Brother McNeil back with us. Amen. He's been gone for, for a while, but we we'll see him back today. Amen. Amen. Let's see your beautiful faces. Amen. 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 All right.
Our scripture be coming from the second chapter, second Timothy, third chapter, second Timothy, Timothy, third chapter, second Timothy.
just for a thought. Living in times like these. Living in times like these. There's a song in our hymn book. Sister Walker sing most of the time in my Sunday school lesson. In times like these, we need a Savior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In times like these, we need a Savior. And when we look at this scripture, we know there's many words here. Because we are living in the last day. The last day began after Jesus' resurrection when he, the Holy Spirit came upon the believers in the day of Pentecost. And you know, in the first uh, chapter of Acts, when the disciples followed him out upon the, the mountain, they saw him go up and vanish in front of their eyes. We've been in the last days. But in these days and times, things are getting more wicked, yeah. more unsettled, yeah. a lot of unrest, yeah. people doubting. Yeah. And there's so many things going on, yes. not just in our nation, but around our world, globally. The Lord has set the stage. He said, perilous time. What is perilous time? Danger. Hazardous. We are in the dangerous time. You know, said, people have gone to the church and died in the church, not from sickness, but from gun violence. When we talk about perilous time, you know, we had our black president came and gone. And most of us here never dreamed that we would see that in our lifetime, especially us seniors. We never dreamed. Because we said before we did the United States, let us have a black president, they will destroy this nation. That's what we say. Most of us, that's what I say. But God said different. That I'm still in control. He came and he's gone. And who to say? We might even have a woman president. In our lifetime, I'm not gonna say whether she'll be black or white, blue or green, but a woman. I'm not gonna say black president because they're not gonna kill Biden because they don't want that to happen right now. <laughs> right, right. But God has the last word. Amen. Living yeah. in times like these, people have gone to the store. And never return home. Yeah. I've got shot in their own houses. Kids shooting kids. Yeah. And you know, we talk about gun violence. Yeah. We say we would hope they would do something about it. But when you really think about it, how is this nation found? On gun violence. Yeah. Indian had bows and arrows. They had guns. Chinese made power. And what makes us think today they're going to do something about guns? For a family. For a family. But we're not to take life for granted. When you leave your house and know that you say that, I will go back home and go, I am going to the store. I'll be back home in 15 or 20 minutes. And see if the Lord's will. Mm -hmm. I'll be back home 
in the 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. Let's talk about the mass shooting in our schools. Yeah. Oh. We figured that would be enough to turn to them and do something about the gun violence. And there are excuses that God doesn't kill, which is true. It's the heart of man. But when you make God so accessible where your kids can get their hands on yeah. in your home, because you don't have a lot of them, that means parents make sure you have your weapon secure. That your child doesn't get a hand on it and take it to school. He said, did you ever think that we would be living in times like these? Yeah. It has become the norm. We hear gunshots and don't even think twice about it. Mm -hmm. I know when I hear in our neighborhood, I kind of wonder sometimes, I wonder who got shot. Mm -hmm. Because we've become so custom. We've become so normal yeah. to it. And especially, sometimes they say, well, this never happened in our neighborhood. What made your neighborhood so differently? You know how God has a way of balancing things out? It's always in, the, in their neighborhood for the black folks over there. That's what they're doing. Death has no cause. And violence doesn't either. It comes in all neighborhoods. Because God has a way of bouncing things out. We know they flooded some of our black neighborhoods with drugs, with guns, so we can kill up each other. But look how the Lord turns those things around. Whenever they're shooting in mass, we call it a mass shooting. God is going to respect your person. He's a just God. And as the scripture said, when Joseph told his brother, he said, you meant it for evil. But God turned it around for good. You know, we did our own family sometimes turns against us. It's the heart. Yeah. And you know, we have now people running over people, killing people and kicked on. Have no no regard for life. I think within the past few weeks, week, my wife and I had the Dodge car to keep them from hitting us. And I said to her, I said, honey, there's something in the water, or in the air, or in the boat. I mean, and they just keep on going. I thank God that I had my eyes looking out the other day, but I had the light. And this guy here didn't bring the light and turn the corner, and if I didn't have caught him, to turn out of his way, he would have hit me. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Don't take life for granted. Because we are living in the last day. I want to look at this one that said, Men, here in the third chapter. Men will be lovers of themselves. I just want to look at that for a moment. It said, men shall be lovers of themselves. That means everyone doing what is right in his or her own eyes. Holy Spot, turn to Judges 17, 6. Judges 17, 6. If you see Joshua, go forward one. For Judges right after Joshua. Was that Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, the Judges? I think I have that order. Leviticus. <laughs> and sometimes when the pastor just grabs a little thing, I'm like, my mind just don't function like you like I'm holding 
they won't retain me anymore. The more I try to remember, it just slips away like it's flying down a hill. But look at Judges 17 and 6. Beginning at that first, that fifth verse, it said, The man Michael had his friend and made an ephod and house and and household idol. He consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. Take his own son to be his God. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right Their own. in his own hmm. eyes. Hmm. So the author suggests that time was so bad that people did whatever they wanted, not what was right in the Lord's eyes. It's my right. I have the right. What about God's right? I mean, the one that made you. The one that you have given account to. When that time comes, what about his right? When he said, You are my son and my daughter. Those that have received my son are my children. What about his right? Going back to a question living in times like these. You know, Jesus said in Luke 18 and 8, he said, Will he really find faith on earth when he returns? Luke 18 and 8, will he really find faith on earth when he returns? Jesus' question here is whether upon his return, Believers will still be looking for him. I said believers still be looking for him. Persecution can cause the faithful to lose their enthusiasm in asking this question. Jesus is exhorting believers not to lose heart. Not to lose If I did not leave from this church today because of some incident or some accident or whatever the cause might be, no, I'm not ready to die, but I am prepared. That is a difference. I am prepared. And I'm going to keep telling others about Jesus. In our society today, we can see how we are slowly drifting. Anytime you see babies that are packing, mm -hmm. going to school with weapons, mm -hmm. and their parents give them weapons. You know, I understand that one parent gave their son a 16-year-old a weapon. Yeah. 16 years old. What does a 16-year-old will do with a weapon? Well, they really know about weapons. They really haven't begun to leave yet. But yet, our babies are packing. And we make the weapons. And not so much of a blame on our babies, but it's our love that are running this work. It's our love that is in control. It's our love that makes the policy. And we say, What's wrong with our generation? You have to ask the question, what is wrong with us? Mm. Lord, where is my heart? Let me take a look at my heart. And they said, Lord, you search me. And not if you find, but when you find some things that not right, take it out from me. Let me give it to you. Because right now my heart is not right, Lord. And I want it to be. So when I tell others about your son, 
that they were missing. To be a witness. Look at the next verse. Say, I just want to tell you a couple of these here. Verse 2, or well, number 2, but I'm going to look at here and I'll ask again. When it says, unloving, unthankful. I'm going to look at the word for a moment. Unthankful. You know, there is no loyalty or thankfulness for anything but only one thing more, more, and more. See, like the more you give the kids, the more they want. Mm. Yeah. The more you give the grandkids. You know, Karen, we, we don't treat our grandkids like we did our kids. We are more lenient. That's my grandchild, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you see, the parents read a book, who book that child? Yeah. Have a go this time. <laughs> Let that child grow up and you say, well, you give him a gift, what you going to say? Right. And they don't say nothing like they're entitled. Mm -hmm. I mean, they act like they're entitled. Yeah. You can say, this is my money. I don't have to give you anything. <laughs> That's my gift. I don't have to give it to you. The least you can say, thank you. And we say, well, yeah, I'm grateful, so and so and so and so. <laughs> and all I've done for them, I gave you the thanks. Okay. Yeah. But that's the time they need. So I gave you the gift. Okay. You know, when you're growing up, when someone gives you something, the first thing your parents say, what you want to say? Yeah. Thank you. The first thing they say, what you want to say? So we can say, Lord, I thank you for your rest last night. I thank you for your witness this morning. I thank you for your keeping all the day long. Lord, I thank you for these 76 years that you've given me. I thank you. Even if I don't see another day, I thank you right now for this moment. Lord, I thank you. I know you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to save me. But I thank you because I could not save myself. Amen. And I thank you. Amen. I thank you. When Thomas asked the question in the 14th chapter of John, and the Lord said, I'm going and where I am that I, when I come, I receive you unto myself. And Thomas said, Lord, how do we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the, way, mm -hmm. the truth, and the life. No one, I mean no one, comes to the Father except through me. No one. He said, well, what about all them other religions? <laughs> what about them? Mm. One thing I know about this scripture, this Bible, when it says it is God breathed, it will talk to you, it will convict you, it, it will let you know that you need some help. It is the only book in this universe that said God breathed. It's living, active, and sharp than a two-edged sword, reaching into the heart and discern the matter of man. It will let you know whose side you stand on. I don't care who you are. It really wants to know. That's why the scripture says, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and he shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. I didn't say a million other people did not for you. I would have seen one. And that was my son. Hear ye him. Yeah. Look at the last portion of our lesson here. It says, having a form of God in it. Because it's, you can really stand here on this scripture in the church 
chapters. We can spend the rest of the day on just some of these work them down. But all these, when you look at the grouping, and number five is they have a form of godliness, but deny its power. And from such people turn away. You know, we kind of worry about who our next president going to be. And all of us are hoping. Lord, no one's going to be Trump. We hope. You look at our justice system. Even the Supreme Court, you know where But God said, don't look at man. Look at me. I control man. I control his actions. I control Satan. And I control his actions. He can only do what I allow. And you can only do what I allow. So don't worry about who might be the next president. But what are you doing in the present? How are you serving me? Who are you telling about me? How are you living your life before me? That's what I want you to do, to be the witness. Denying having a form of godliness, but denying the power is such turn from people. It said that a form of godliness is an outward appearance of reverence for God. Denying his power describes religious activity that is not connected to a living relationship with Jesus Christ. I asked the question one day, Lord, how do I know I'm saved when I have given my heart? And it was so plain. He said, Your desire has changed. You might not be able to carry it out like you want to all the time, but your desire now is to please me and not yourself. Me, myself, and I. Because at one time I knew I was a wreck down the aisle. I knew this. I'll tell you how I felt and didn't think twice about it. Didn't tell how you felt about it. That was your problem. I said something to a guy one day, and my friend said, Man, that, that was harsh. And I didn't tell my friend, like, Yeah, what was it? And I knew the time came that I needed help. I said, Lord, I need your help. Yeah. I know I need your help. I have read other religions, studied other religions, been overseas, seen the Buddha, just carried a Buddha cross around my neck and lost it. It was a good thing. <laughs> but God knew. So when I came back, he started working on me. Because I needed some work. I knew I was an alcoholic, drug addict, drug addict, whatever. All of those things was me. And I said, Lord, I give it to you. He changed me from the inside out. And as I started walking with him, he started cleansing me, cleaning me. And there's certain things I have said during that time. Let that go now. You're a new creature in Christ. And I said, thank you. And he's still working on me until he called me home. He worked all over me. Let know his son. Until he called us home. He said, deny his power, religious activity, relationship with Jesus Christ. Going to church, knowing Christian, Christian doctrine, Christian doctrine. Using Christian cliches and following a Christian community. Tradition. Tradition. 
Für dich. Für dich. Jetzt sagen sie, wir wissen, wie du lebst. Das ist Lord, Lord, what would you have us to do? Such practice can make a person look good. But if the inner attitude of belief, love and worship are lacking, the outer appearance is meaningless. Yeah. Paul warns us not to be deceived by people who only appear to be Christian. It may be difficult to distinguish them from true Christian at first, but their lives will give them away. As the scripture said, you will know the tree by the fruit it bears. For trees bring fruit in due season. If some people give out a moment enough, their true color. It's all not true. They think of it going to come out. They're true. Come on. As I close, I just want to say do not take life for granted. Because that fourth chapter, in that third verse, through the fifth, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desire, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth. We turn aside to found. That's heartbreaking. But we thank God for His poor Holy Spirit that keeps us, He has sealed us, and He let us know. Test the Spirit, by the Spirit, see it to be of God. In his spirit, they say Jesus Christ was not God in the flesh. He's not of God. That's why he said, I gave my own attention to God and Son. There is no other whereby me and might be saved. And the scripture says, it will be arranged. But most of the time in our society, we look like the majority. If the majority is going that way, I should follow. As the scriptures say, draw is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the gate that leads to eternal life. Now, let us walk with the Lord daily that he might strengthen us. And also, to be in his word. So we need to talk to you, speak to you. The Lord said, I will be brought closer to you 99.9%. He's going to talk to you through his written word. Oh, yeah, he can off the page. He can do anything he wants to. And every so often he does that. Because he want to reach you right where you are in your intellect. That's how he works. Wherever you at, God said, I'll be there. I will reach you. And I will meet you where you am. This time as we open the doors of the church, might be someone in Christian land, a radio, that have not accepted Christ as their Savior, their Lord. At this time, we're going to ask, will you open the door of your heart? And let him come in. Will you open the door of your heart? Not time to play a Christian. But to be a Christian. Will you let him in? Will you let him in and open the door? I want I will come in and talk with him. 
Watch over our loved ones in Kenya, our Christian brothers and sisters, glory. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord.